Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the professor, and this is the moment of truth. Oh, what a difference a day makes, doesn't it? I think you're familiar with this clown, aren't you? This is the so-called historian, expert on Ukraine that Joke Reed had on her show. You know, the one who told black folks to stay put. That's her advice to the black people trying to flee Ukraine, just stay put. Well, she's popped up again just like a hemorrhoid, only this time she's on BNC. First of all, I am surprised that these guys are still around. Second of all, I can't believe that they didn't get Mark Lamont shill to be the one to talk to her. That way you can have one discredited bootlick talking to another. Well, this Kimberly something or other Varnon, now she's singing a brand new tune. Oh, she's sounding very different than she was before. Very different than she was on Joke Reed's show. Now what she's saying is that the reports she's gotten from her people on the ground are that things have improved. Why, the Africans, they're able to get through the checkpoints and cross the border now. But you know what? Uh, she says that also that they need to leave through borders other than Poland. Which is exactly what we told you. So in other words, ain't a doggone thing changed, but here she is trying to make it sound like it's different. That's the reason why she's on BNC. Because she knows doggone well that if she was talking to any members of the black media, we wouldn't be letting her get away with that mess. She'd get called on it. But that's the point. This is propaganda. That's how it works. You're not allowed to question it. So she's singing a whole other tune. And notice, though, that she's not going to be recommending that Africans stay put. Oh, no. She wasn't recommending that this time. She referenced once in passing the disastrous segment that she did on Joke Reed's show. And yeah, I think that she pretty much knows she stepped in it big time. But of course, she just has to constantly shoehorn everyone else into our mix when it comes to the discussion about us. Here we are talking about how black people are treated, and she's sitting here talking about Indians and Asians and Ukrainians and Romas and the man on the moon. First of all, the Indian government stood with Russia. They're standing with Russia right now. So I don't know why their citizens are trying to leave. They're irrelevant to this conversation. Secondly, the only reason that this story has traction is not because of Indians or Roma or anyone else. It's because black people brought it to light. Full stop. Oh, but she was just beginning her bootle explaining. But I do want to have, you know, some caveats with this, because I think we also have to understand this is a massive humanitarian crisis we're seeing. That does not excuse any of the racism that we've seen. But I think it's important to context the chaos. You hear stories, um, some of the students have discussed waiting at the border for 20 hours, you know, to get through. Unfortunately, that's also a very normal case for everyone at the border. Did you get all that? So this clown is bootlicking heavy. She's even saying that it's normal for people to wait 20 hours at the border. Really? I didn't know that was normal. Um, so I've, I've watched a video of an African student. She was talking about how they had a line for Ukrainians and a line for everyone else. And at first sight, this does seem like it is completely based on discrimination and racial discrimination. But this is why this context is important. So at the outset of the war, when we first started seeing people leaving, this is what was happening on the border, where they're separating foreigners who did not have Ukrainian passports and allowing Ukrainians to pass through. One of the many things I've been concerned about is what happens to these Afro-Ukrainians who only hold a Ukrainian passport. If they're being discriminated against at the border and they can't get through, what option do they have? There's nothing wrong with separating the refugees based on nationality. After all, it's a passport issue you see, your paperwork you see. And then as you heard in the very next breath, she says she's concerned about Afro-Ukrainians who have Ukrainian passports, but they still face discrimination anyway. Uh, wait a minute. Didn't she just say it was an issue for black folks just having your paperwork? Uh, it's a passport issue. Yeah, it's a passport issue until it's not. It's racial, except it's not. She's just all over the place. But then again, when you try to deny reality, that's what happens. But we all know why she's really out here. She's out here to sell the white media soap, to push the line that they can't afford to do themselves try to pacify us with all this splaining. It's been really hard for Africans and um, people of African descent who are also Slavic um, to live in Eastern Europe. They face different forms of racial discrimination. Indian students also face racial discrimination. Middle Eastern students face racial discrimination. Also uh, the Roma population 
um, has experienced a lot of racial discrimination. In December, we saw footage from the Belarus-Poland border where Syrian refugees were freezing to death. They were trying to get into Poland. They weren't allowed in. She's supposed to be here to show and certify. I'm a black woman and I'm telling you that black people suffering is no worse than anyone else. There's Asians out there and Indians and there's Roma and there's Ukrainians and it's just a humanitarian crisis. This is just the great crush of humanity, you see. Why, the Syrian refugees, they were left out in the cold at the Polish border. The Polish wouldn't even let them through. They had them just out there freezing. That's what gets me, just constantly crowbarring everybody else into a discussion that's supposed to be about us. And then the constant self-contradictions. It's normal, except it's not. It's passports, only it isn't. If this is the best explanation that she can give, no wonder they didn't put a white person out here to do this. This is horrible. They'll let some bootlick go ahead and blow their credibility because they never had any to begin with. So they put her out there because she's got the requisite amount of melanin and they figure that'll do the trick, only it didn't. And this goofy buck tooth heifer just laughing her way all through this segment, just while she's bootleg explaining, just the constant laughing and giggling. Ain't a dang thing funny. Black people are suffering with an invading army on their heels. They're being thrown off of the trains leaving the country, the only hope they got to leave safely. And they're being told, oh, it's only whites only who are allowed to leave. The rest of y'all are staying here. And she laughs about that. She thinks that's a reason to smile to her. That's cause for humor. That's why she's on MSNBC and BNC, the only chumps who would put her on. Hell, who needs racist Ukrainians or Polish border guards? You got this so-called historian who's more than happy to make excuses for them. See, they're not going to put a Ukrainian historian out there, not a white one anyway, who's going to say exactly the opposite of what Ukrainians are saying whose job is to invalidate and negate what white people are saying. They only do that with us. Well, we know what you Negroes are saying, but um, here's, here's what we want you to say. We're going to get a black person to say it and see if you go for it. What this is for her is a pathetic attempt at image rehabilitation. The bootlicks have been getting their teeth kicked in on this whole Ukraine thing. And they're feeling the heat from their white paymasters. I mean, after all, they only had one job to get us to be quiet about all the racism that the Ukrainians are dishing out, except we wouldn't. And worse than that, not only are we calling out the racism that's being enacted against the Africans over there, we're going ahead and we're pulling out all the receipts. We're telling the world about all the neo-Nazis that the Ukrainians have generated from their own home base and who they've invited in so that they can put their heads together. Joke Reed talks about unity. What the hell unity? What unity is there? Unity with the people who have been telling us for the longest time they can't do anything about the murders of black people. Oh, ain't no reparations for y'all, but there's $350 million literally overnight for the Ukrainians on the side of the world. We can't write black people a check. Well, we can't even talk about discussing writing you a check. But as for all of those neo-Nazis over there in Ukraine, why, we can write those guys a $350 million check overnight with more on the way. No study required. No committee required. No debate required. We don't need this one to go in for review. And we're not going to worry about whether or not we break the bank. It needs to be done. These are white people we're talking about. I mean, just the damned insult. Kimberly Varnon. They trot this idiot out who I never heard of. And you never heard of her either. Oh, but she's going to tell us what we should think. And what's she telling us? That the mistreatment of black people, why, that's a minor thing. It's why it's normal. It's no different than anyone else, even though the entire reason we're bringing it up is because black people over there are being treated exactly the opposite of everyone else. This is happening in a war zone. But she's got the nerve to laugh and giggle about it. But obviously somebody must have hipped her to how dumb she made herself look. Oh, no, she wasn't going to be saying anything about staying put, not this time. Oh, she'd talk about how, I, I, as I said in another interview, I was concerned about this via humanitarian crisis. Yeah, you also said the black folks over there need to stay put, too. You didn't say that about the white Ukrainians, though. They're free to leave. But the black folks, y'all just need to, to stay put. That's the best thing for you, because the bad optics you see. And Joke Reed was amening her every stupid word. Well, the black media leapt on that, and we beat Joke and her friend Kimberly like a drum. We wouldn't let this be ignored. And as always, the rest of the white media pulls up the rear. 
after we had already blown the lid off of it, here they come pulling up the rear going, oh, you know, we've been, we've been hearing about these black people being mistreated. Uh, yeah, this right in front of you. You guys are hanging out at the border just like they are, except the difference is you didn't turn your cameras to see them. And then we put the heat on all of a sudden. Ooh, I guess we better talk about it because it's, it's all over social media and this black media won't let it go. Joke Reed and her pal made a hell of a mess and her bosses at MSNBC knew it because a day or so later they trotted out Tiffany Cross Eyes to try to clean it up. That's the reason why I hopped on this and I kept stomping on it. It's important that when they do this garbage, we gotta handcuff them to it so that they can't walk away from it. That's part of the process of delegitimizing the white media. We know that they're lying. We know what their lies are. We got to make sure that they wear their lies. They're not going to be allowed to take them off and go on another network and spew some other gibberish and pretend as if all is well as if they didn't say the stuff that we heard them say just the day before. Now, obviously, the white media is desperately hoping that this Varnon character might have some sort of usefulness to them. I mean, they got a million bootlicks, but in her case, I mean, hey, another fool like this, someone who's going to just tell black folks to stay put in the middle of a massive invasion while literally everybody else, as MSNBC put it, is getting on anything heading west. When you got somebody who will give black people suicidal advice like that, why, you know you got yourself a grade A bona fide bootlick. Another bootlick who's willing to degrade themselves to this degree is going to be a little bit challenging to find them. So their attempt to dictate to us what we're supposed to think and shame us into silence because we don't want to make the racist Ukrainians look bad, well, that failed. They can see that their opinion means nothing to us. Oh, by the way, MSNBC, the problem isn't just that you sent Joke Reed out to do it. You could have sent any white reporter you want. It wouldn't have mattered. We're paying attention to the message now. We don't give a dang about the messenger. And no, you're not going to do what you did with D. Ray McKesson or with any of these other fools. That's the reason why I keep calling these clowns out. My job is to make sure that they get hobbled right out of the gate. We're not going to let them get any traction. You're not going to establish yourself. You're not putting down any roots. We won't let you. I guess nobody ever told them you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And Varnon's first impression was as a shameless apologist for white racism and anti-black bigotry and telling black people to sacrifice our dignity, our self-respect, by not calling out racism, and to literally sacrifice black people's lives by staying put in the face of a massive enemy invasion, all so that the white executives they work for don't catch heat from their pals in government. We don't want to make the racists look bad. That's literally the reason why. We can't have the racists looking bad. Uh, aren't you going to tell the Ukrainians to change their behavior then? Oh, we can't do that. It's the middle of a war, you see. We can't make any demands of them. Well, why are you making demands of black people then? Well, you guys know better. Putin, you know, it's Putin. That's why you guys know better. And as an African immigrant, that tells you everything you need to know about Joke Reed. She's telling other Africans, y'all just sit and die. And then she waves the flag at us. And tells black people that we have a patriotic duty to stay silent about this. Who does she think was going to go for that? But it shows how much contempt they have that they would even try it. And Joke Reed can't deny that she was in on it. She was agreeing and amening Varnon's every stupid word. We led the charge on calling out this garbage. The day of us having people telling us all sorts of stupid stuff and talking crazy to us and we just sit there and say nothing, that day is over. And Varnon, she's damaged goods now. And we're the ones who made sure that she wouldn't be running any game on us. Now, she's not alone. We still have the remnant of the old black media. And for those of you who wonder why it is that we keep kicking them and why we make sure that we keep stomping on them, because that's what you do to make sure they don't get up again. See, the old decrepit black media, they died a long time ago. And yet, they're still making noises and even contaminating people with their degenerate content. How is that possible? Because, frankly, the old black media is a zombie now. The only thing that's keeping them moving at this point is a constant infusion of white media money and attention. They look like a rotted husk of their former selves. And the noises they make are disgusting and repellent, just like a zombie. For the bootlick, their lives mean nothing. That's the reason why I keep bringing this up. They are showing you that the lives of other black people mean absolutely nothing to them. People who actually look like them. And they have nothing but utter contempt for the lives of other black people. What does that tell you about themselves? When these fools look in the mirror, 
They see nothing. And what do you call a creature that sees nothing when it looks in the mirror? You call it a vampire. The bootlick has no soul, no identity. They're the undead like Dracula. In their case, they're worse. Not only are they undead, but they feed off the living and turn them into mind-robbed corpses too. So we're not letting this old dead black media crawl out of its crypt. I got the doggone steel toe boots on. We're going to stomp them right back down into that grave again. They ain't getting out of it. Because even though they're too dumb to realize it, even though they're too far in denial to want to accept it, the reality is they can screech and yell as much as they want. They can be on MSNBC, BNC. They can be on all the doggone stations they want. It doesn't matter. Because the audience that they're trying to reach, the audience that they're trying to deceive, stopped listening to these clowns a long time ago. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Mouse, Eddie Newsom, Sakina Collins, Michael Johnson, and Chief Traumahawk. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.